What you are about to see is why Jay-Z regretted inviting DMX to one of the biggest tours in rap history, where he was the main headliner. Remember, rap tours wasn't going out at that time. There's no rap yes. shows. Me, Method Man, Red Man, DMX, this tour is packed. First night, sold out. X is about to go on, and I'm like, you know, I want to see. I got and like X a little- X is before you. Yes. X is going before yep. me. In my mind, this is what I believe. I was like, he can't rap better than me. The lights are up. He's in the hallway. He goes, it goes, doom, doom. The arena's shaking. And I'm like, this is cool. And then it goes, doom, doom. And then he goes, <laughs> and the arena goes crazy. <laughs> First of all, it's deafening. And I'm like, oh, shit. He's running back and forth. He has a thing, it looks like blood. It's like he's <laughs> drinking blood, right? And he's running back and forth. Mom, run two, one, two, here we go, yeah. go, go. Halfway through the show, then he takes his shirt off. First the guys are going crazy, now the girls are going crazy. <laughs> and then he gets to the end and he starts a prayer. And now they're crying. Yeah. The whole arena <laughs> is crying. Yeah. They're crying tears. And I'm like, they're like, hey, now you go. And I was like, <laughs> we got 56 dates of this Thank you for the love you give me, why? I wasn't used to that. See, most of the people that gave me love ended up taking it back. What about your mother, what's she like? I'm trying to word it properly because, you know what I'm saying, she is my mother and I don't want to disrespect her. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's a lot of people in here, but uh, I just feel like this. No love. Before DMX became the intimidating rapper we know today, he was the scared child that hid from his mother. DMX's mother took out a lot of frustration on him due to the fact that my brother had left the relationship. I was just shy by any means, but I don't think I was confident either. Couldn't be too confident. And, you know, in my situation, confidence will get you a beating. Expression will get your ass whooped. I started to notice DMX coming over to my house with marks on his face, stuff like that. And my mother noticed it too. She like beat me so much, she used to beat me till she was tired. You know? You know, she would always threaten us with, you know, the white people are gonna come take you away. You want that? You want that? I think I did something wrong. I had to stay in my room for the whole summer. I could only come out to like use the bathroom. I could see the kids playing in the back. What I did, I did like all my schoolwork. I did it all over again. Then I read every single book in my room. Um, I had a zipper, a moving part of a zipper, and that was a fire engine to me. I mean, that's pretty much why he acted out a lot. As a child, you don't, you don't get no attention from your mother, and then your father's not around. Of course, you're gonna act out in some way. And when DMX was seven years old, his mother took him to get some help. So the procedure is you go there for an interview and then take you home. Then, you know, you prepare to come back. My mother comes back from like across the room. All right, I'll see you in three months, and I'm like, can't leave me, you know what I mean? Like, we came, we came here, I'm supposed to go home. And then she just left. Right then and there, I learned to just put away, conceal, bury, whatever whatever bothered me, that story. I think another side of me was born right there. The side that um, enabled me to protect myself. Don't worry about it. I got you now. X was created to protect Earl. He's the angry one. Earl is who I met. Earl is 
a nice, genuine, humble person that just wants to be loved. How did you meet? We grew up two blocks away from mm -hmm. each other. Oh, you're kidding. So you guys know each other from way yeah. back. Yeah. How old were you when you met? When we first Elementary met, school. Yeah, like 11. I just felt really connected with Earl at that time because I had realized that he struggled a lot with insecurities of his worth. So me and him automatically just bonded. This is the, I mean, this is my best friend, you know what I'm saying? The lady in my life. And when DMX found out he was going to be a dad, he knew he wanted his family to be different. I was in the room with the sheriff while they were getting her ready to go into delivery. I was so excited to be with the woman I loved, having my first baby. When they put her on the stretcher to take her down the hall, and the nurse said that I couldn't go with her, all my good thoughts vanished. The nurse wasn't playing, and the sheriff was already halfway down the corridor. This. I tried to push past him, but then two short rent-a-cop dudes moved in front of me to block my way, and things got hectic. They never let me pass, but a few hours later, I didn't care anymore, because I was holding my healthy baby boy, Xavier. Like, from not having a father, like, like, like I dove into it, like, you know, going to, like, an amusement park with him, um, teach him how to ride a bike, roller skate, you know what I mean? Like, like, you know, the fundamentals. Can I get some, some love today, Jenny? Can I get a hello or something? He was so little and innocent. But not more than 30 minutes after I was sitting on the living room couch with Xavier in my arms, the buzzer rang. It was why he said we had to go to the studio. If we don't go tonight, we're going to miss the label's deadline. But I'm trying to chill with my son. And he said, yeah, but we got to get this done. This is business. I was pissed. But what was right, there would always be time for me to spend with Xavier. And I had committed myself to making my music happen no matter what. Five minutes later, I was gone. As we got more into him being more famous, I used to say to him, how do you get on that stage? And you praise God the way you do. And I will rap for you, sing for you, reach for you, preach for you. And then you do the things that you do. DMX recently spent 90 days in jail after he was convicted of theft and drug charges. I just looked up his arrest warrant, man. It's just 17 pages. In many ways, I succumbed to the pressure. I've been forced to push so many different feelings and emotions. It's, it's f***ing me up. I used drugs as a way out. I would make sure no one would want to be around me. That was my only time to myself when I was doing, when I was doing drugs. In front of the world, it was a lot of smiles. And you know, he treated me with a lot of respect, but yeah. behind closed doors. I'm grown, I make my own bed, and I'm gonna lie. So why, yeah. why, why say all that disrespectful stuff? Like, What's disrespectful? Did I disrespect you at all? Yes. See, one man, this is the thing that me up in you it. You know what? You know, what? Even no, 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 you know no, no, to be honest with you, I don't give a you. Let me ask something. You want to see you're going to get it right now. I didn't no, want to get married. I did, I I did not want to get married. So you say he used to curse you out in front of your children also? All the time. Are they afraid of him? Do they like him? How do the children feel about him? They used to be very afraid of him because all they can remember is him yelling through the house yeah. and cursing me. Xavier telling me one day that he's going to kill his father the next time he talks to me like that. There were times where I did not like him as a human being, times where I hated him as a human being, of how dishonorable he was to our family. Um, when she read the newspaper, it was in like three different newspapers, every newspaper in New York, front page, that, you know, had another girl pregnant. I just felt betrayed and that was really dark because he's my best friend in the whole world and when that happened, I was just, cr I was crushed. I went out and got high about two, three days straight. Then come home. He was getting high like on a bench. Uncle Ray came and got me and said, I need your help to get or your husband out this hotel room. Earl was very paranoid. He had a, a gun. That was the time when it was leave me to alone. I'll shoot you. He was like, they're getting ready to come at us. The gun came out. I smacked his hand down. Out of nowhere, I hear like this muffled pop. My 
God, you shot a correct. I said to Shira, just get X and go. Uncle Ray never told the cops that that's what happened. I was like, it's time for me to make a decision. And I was done. I said, I can't, I'm not gonna do this. My father's decisions broke my heart. That madness became just acceptable. I want you to own up and say I did this. All the time we talk about, yeah, bragging, yeah, I got this girl. Okay. Married to my mother, and well, then... What you don't understand, that is a difference between <laughs> and loving someone. Huh? I mean, so why didn't you... Like, yo, dad, what's up? Like, nothing. You, you sitting there because there was Because there was never any challenging you. There, there Every time challenge. in the house... You never attempted to challenge. Ask what you want. A healthy relationship with you. Can we have that? Yeah, I mean, that's what I've... Clean, completely clean. What do you mean? You. That's what you're asking me for? Because that's, that's the only way it's going to happen. How are we going to have a nice, healthy relationship if you're toxic? Toxic? Well, if there's going to be a condition, if there's going to be a, a demand, all I've given you is unconditional love, I'm not going to lie that. I love you. I'm always going to love you. I love who I am. I'm not going to change for anyone. I smoked weed before you was born. I drank before you was born. I did a lot before you was born. Love is going to be unconditional. I, don't, I will never put a condition on our love or our relationship. Never. Ever. And I guess until, until you get to that place, we won't have a relationship. It's sad that I, you know, my son wants nothing from me. I have so much to offer. That, that, that doesn't fly. That's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. It's not going to fly. Well, I guess I'll see you, I'll see you at my funeral. Man. No. No. Chief, you know? If you're gonna put a condition on our relationship, well then I guess that's when you see me. DMX is in the hospital after he was found unconscious in a hotel parking lot. Police responded to calls of an unresponsive man in a Ramada Inn parking lot in Yonkers, New York. This time, the reason for the rapper's hospitalization is still unconfirmed. I walked out to the car, a heart stop. People talk about out of body experience. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing the police officers working on me. Couldn't see me, but I saw my legs. Really? But I knew it was me. How I don't know. I knew it was me. But like that is in that that vision is like is burned in my mind. The blessing in that, it made me realize, you know, in movies, you know, death is, is, is sexy. But it showed me that, you know what? By the time you realize that you're in a f***ed up situation, it's too late to come back from it. It's too late to come back from it. Right at that moment, a lot of things changed. Not that I didn't appreciate life or the, or the blessing God gave me, but I, I, I didn't always do what I was supposed to do with it. Drugs were a symptom of a biggest problem, mm. a bigger mm. problem. I just blocked it out, blocked it out, blocked it out. But th there's only so much you can block out, you know, before you run out of space. The things you stored away are just gonna come out and just fall all over the place. I had to deal with the things that hurt me that I didn't deal with when they hurt. I used to always used to turn to drugs when, you know, just I was feeling a certain way. and. and Sometimes when the pressure builds up, yeah. you know, I'll call. That's all I said. I just wanted to say, mommy. Yeah. I wanted to say that word. I just wanted to just say hi to her. I haven't talked to her in years. Not Wait. once, not once, not once she ever that she ever told me that she loved me. The lady said, um, um, how would you feel if you saw your mother right now? I'm like, I don't know, like, you know, I, I didn't know. And then she asked, well, I came in and she walked. <laughs> I 
she walked in the door and um I told him about what happened when I went to Children Village. I had gone back and forth to court with him, you know, because he wasn't going to school the way he was supposed to. And the judge told me, he said, find somewhere or we will find some place for him. So the judge told me, you know, just take him there and leave him there. You know, I said, can I say goodbye? No, it's better this way if you don't say goodbye to him. So I left him there and I went, I walked to the bus and I cried all the way home because he didn't know what was happening. I think it's at that point right there that I just let everything go. I mean, that's how. And he looked at me and he, he cried. He said, Ma, I didn't know that. I said, I know. I know you didn't know. I said, but I want you to know. I said, no matter what anybody said, I don't ever want you to think you were not loved. I said, you was loved. I said, it broke my heart <sighs> to leave you there. She's crying, I'm crying. It was like, it was like, like a, like a I don't know, a different, it wasn't a hurt cry. It was, it was, hmm. it was like, yes, this is what I need. And yeah. To walk around holding anger wears you down. I, I, I don't got time to be mad at nobody, man. I got too much other shit to focus on. I said, I got, I got, I got 14 kids, man. I, that, that same energy I could put into, you know, trying to find time to do something and think of with things to do. Where are I with my children? I miss my children. I miss my children. My mom, she asked us, hey, listen, I'm, um, I'm going to see your dad. Do you want to come? <sighs> we're here, we're healthy, we're smiling. I want to tap out a few times. I want to tap out a few times. I'm like, how would my babies look at that? I'm proud of the man you've become. A lot of exits you could have took to not be the person you are. Stayed on that highway. Stayed on that highway. Stayed on that highway. I did. Mean, this is. <laughs> <laughs> all right. It's all right. I'm just starting to recognize and understand the blessings that God has for me. If I only commit to doing the right thing. What are you doing for the holidays that's coming up? Do you? Well, we're gonna have a turkey drive. When I was when I was like really big, we used to um, feed the homeless. Mm -hmm. Just start a conversation. Next thing you know, I got 20 people around. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just listen. 145th Street, he went into check cashing place and took our money and fed everybody. You know, it's like wherever there's like a need, you know, whatever's like brought to my attention, we knock it out. You know, we're giving away stuff to the kids, kids in group homes. I'm talking to you from a person who grew up right where you grew up at. I stole a car from right there. I, 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 went, to, I went to Waverly Street from this mountain. Yeah, rub it out, man. There's nothing wrong with that, man. There's nothing wrong with that. Let it out. My goal is to be an inspiration to someone that I don't know. Anyone that can. To those most afflicted, to the addicts, to the prisoners. All of those people that have been through something. Just get back up and, and try again. He been through what I've been through. Dude changed my life, man. That profit to me. If I'm able to do that, if I'm able to touch just one person, then I've done something wonderful in my life. Not just that moment. Rapper DMX is in grave condition and fighting for his life. After suffering a heart attack following an apparent drug overdose. He was at home in Mount Vernon, New York, when he was rushed to the hospital Friday night. 
Many gathered there praying for his recovery while honoring the musician. Kept on life support so family members, especially from his extended family, would have time to come in here and at least see him. Breaking news for you now. Things weren't looking good this morning. Now it appears the worst is in fact confirmed. He passed away Friday with his family by his side, calling him a warrior who fought to the very end. I seen the Earl six days before it happened, before God called him home. And we had deep conversations. He said to Shira, God birthed me to be in the world. I am not of the world, I'm for the world. I didn't realize he was getting ready to transition. He was tired, guys. He knew that he ran his race. Earl was amazing, and he wasn't perfect by a long shot. He loved family, he loved his children. You can never prepare for anything like this. I am so honored to have a father, to have a father like we have. This man deepened my ability to love every time, every lesson he ever taught me. Expose the places that scare you most. Expose them and go towards them. That is where you will grow the most. Sometimes blessing comes in the form of a hard time or a difficult situation. A miracle will only happen on the platform of a tragedy. There's no f situation, then where's the potential for the miracle? It has to be a f up situation for a miracle to happen. Well, how the f do you expect to get a miracle on, on the first day of summer? Butterflies are all over the place and birds in the sky. And, uh, what, what could the miracle be? You're already blessed. What could the miracle be? Just before I go, I'm going to look back on my life and uh, thank God for every moment. For every single moment. Every single moment. It's, it's those moments, like drops of water in the ocean, when they come together, you see the beauty of who you are and why you are.